Agatha, you had been struggling with anxiety and uh, we have been working together for a little bit. And uh, well, tell me, is it possible? I think, yeah, it's absolutely possible. Um, and I think when you're in that anxious state or when you're living in those states very often, it actually feels unimaginable. Like it feels that you'll never be able to change or address that thing. Um, and I think being on the other end of it now, on the other side of it, um, it's just, it's such a relief because you realize that that thing that you thought you were bound to forever, that was a part of you, was just a temporary condition and that there is really a way to talk your way into a different way of being in this world, you know? Now, was it for you uh, a journey where you would say, well, looking at this anxiety, it was just something that I had to get over with or talk myself out to or like, you know, I talk about dog and that uh, anxiety inside of you and having a little bit more uh, a closer and maybe more positive relationship. Was that also what happened to you? In other words, are you still afraid of your anxiety or do you actually have more compassion for it? I have a lot more compassion for it. I mean, I think when the, when the, when the trigger hits, I think the instant feeling maybe feels like how it used to be. But um, the cycle is just so short because there's a benevolent part of you, a compassionate part of you that's there to support that process. So um, maybe something triggers that situation, but instead of it turning into like a seven hour fest of anxiety, like there's a whole person now that has space for that anxious person and I can have a dialogue with it that choose that thing and then I'm able to take action from a different place so I'm not building a life around that kind of anxious reactive state I'm building a life from this whole state and then I'm having richer experiences and my life keeps getting brighter and warmer because of the ability to be in communion with that anxious self now you had certainly uh, several uh, triggers or let's say events also recently f I know from your life where you know you could say well my anxiety could have been just basically make me housebound or completely imprison yeah. me and yeah. Uh, yeah. and it didn't yeah. and uh, maybe you know you yeah. can explain a little bit about that yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and I you know I don't feel um embarrassed to share anything, but I recently just started um, getting involved with somebody so in a relationship, and that was really hard for me because I had a lot of um, triggers about how to keep my heart open in, in relationship to another person, how to stay vulnerable and not shut down. Um, and so my anxiety was going through the roof, um, more so because I was growing into this new part of my life and I was being challenged to um, to to deal with those old triggers in a in a really kind of immediate way, and I keep thinking that like if I had not had the dialogue that I have now with this part of myself, I wouldn't have even been able to step into this relationship because I would have been shutting everything down every step of the way that I felt that old pain or that old shame or those old feelings that caused my anxiety, and I wouldn't have allowed myself to have the experiences that are now growing and blossoming from this state of wholeness. I keep saying that word wholeness, but, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, and it felt hot. It felt hard for me in the moment because, um, like I think, like I think I said, I was expanding to this new part of my life, but, but I, every single step of the way had a dialogue for that anxious self. And then when I was able to, um, soothe her or quiet her, I was able to go into the world and have a brand new experience, not the old story, you know? Yeah, well, that's really powerful because, you know, I think you know, one of the things we often are also feeling is the identity that is the anxiety where, you know, anxiety yeah. goes in hand in hand with shame and insecurity. And uh, now when you yeah. think about your own yeah. journey, do you feel like that by addressing where the anxiety came from and understanding more the subconscious patterns and beliefs that were attached to it, 
that you also found more about yourself that before you didn't see? In other words, was the anxiety a catalyst for you to, to that wholeness that you're feeling now? I think I gained so much personal dignity, which I think is like, um, I mean, it's just a, it's, that's just such a gift. I can't even explain what that's like, which is that, I mean, there's no parts of anything that have happened to you on your journey that you can't stand behind and love and support and bring with you everywhere you go, that you're not compartmentalized or shunning or hiding certain parts of yourself, you know, that you get to experience the fullness of yourself in the world. You know, I think I was in a, I was in a box because I was only able to be, I was only able to be in my life when I felt that the conditions were right. Do you know what I mean? Like when I felt that I had control of the anxious self and now I could walk out into the world and be perfect. But now that illusion of perfection kind of fell away because what came was a deep sense of compassion and dignity for the past, for the for mm -hmm. the old hurts, um, mm -hmm. and the ability to hold those with me with love wherever I go, and I think I mean even more powerfully than for myself, it's it's awoken an immense compassion for everyone in my life. You know, I look at other people now, and when I see them struggling or spinning out or getting nervous or having a meltdown, I don't even sit in judgment over them. You know, I have an ability to be compassionate and present to that experience in them. And I've seen that my ability to even do that for them melts that anxious self in them, you know? So it's like has this huge domino effect where that self-love that I've found, it comes, it, it, it's being offered and it's there for other people as well, you know? So it's like your yeah. whole world gets better. Your whole world gets better because you learn how to you learn how to be compassionate to those parts of yourselves, and then everybody in your life benefits from that because you're able to do that for other people too. And that's what everybody needs, right? At the end of the day, is like the dignity for whatever's happened to them, and the understanding, and the love and care for that experience, not the shame for that experience. You know. Well, that's yeah. exactly I mean, that's so beautiful that you're saying it because I believe in the past and, you know, most people would do this when we feel anxious and insecure and then someone around us is negative. It's not compassion for the people that comes up. It's usually we take it personally and we are more withdrawing or we are more yeah. feeling like more ashamed and more insecure. So the fact that mm -hmm. you don't take these negativities or their struggles personally but you can see through them and you don't see it as a rejection you didn't see it as a reflection on you but you are actually seeing more like wow they need a little compassion and kindness and i mean that's just beautiful now do you feel that you had to somehow develop love for your anxiety to go to that place where you're now yeah yeah absolutely i mean it's it's literally, you know, I had this conversation with a girlfriend of mine that is also working with you, but we were just talking about how, um, you know, one of the first steps is like when you meet these, when you meet these anxious parts and you realize that like you, you have inherited, you are their loving parent and it is your, it's not your job. It's you actually have the ability to do that. It's like one of the first steps for me was like, I didn't want that responsibility, you know, and then it literally felt like I was sitting with a child in a room that was throwing a tantrum and the child was me, <laughs> you know, and it was like, we're going to figure this out, kid, you know, and that was like the first loving thing I could say. And it's, you know, now that dialogue is a lot more loving, but I, I was telling my friend, you know, if that's the least you can do, if the least you can do is say like, all right, I don't know how to talk to you, but I am here and I'm going to try, <laughs> you know, that that is like step one in that, in that conversation, I think. And I had to go, I had to go through those, those were the hard moments. Do you know what I mean? The willingness to sit with myself, you know, the willingness to not numb out, the willingness to not scapegoat, the willingness to not blame someone else for my feelings, you know, the willingness to sit there. And it's, it's like what you were saying earlier. It's like the more that I sat with that, that part of myself, the more I learned how to trust myself and she learned how to trust me. And that trust keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. And it's a resilience, you know, at the, beyond 
behind that trust is a resilience, and that resilience is is then what feels like calm and ease and all these beautiful things in life that we're seeking that are so far from those anxious states, you know? Wow, that's really beautifully said. And, you know, it just shows you also that, I mean, when you think about the sliding door phenomenon and you think about you would have kept your more hostile and uh, adverse relationship with anxiety and you would have not embraced it and you would have not opened yourself up to it, you would have not all the other experiences that you're describing because somehow you would have always yeah. felt like, well, I'm fragmented in myself or I'm in my battle with myself. So I don't trust myself. How can I trust even anyone else around me? So it definitely, you know, making peace with anxiety was the first step for you to also have a fuller experience of life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, because if you can't, I mean, if you can't trust yourself, then you can't trust anyone else and you can't trust life and the experience of being here. And that trust is vital to having the most beautiful experience, you know. Well, Agatha, thank you so much for calling in. I know that a lot of people are inspired and touched by what you're saying because you are someone, I think you can really say, you have not only healed your relationship with anxiety, you have grown and expanded beyond it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that is just such a, a wonderful way of also understanding that anxiety doesn't have to be a lifelong struggle or something that you feel like burdened with for the rest of your life. You can actually have that powerful emotion, that powerful part inside of you and have it as a catalyst uh, for your own growth and ultimately coming to yourself. Because like in your case, many people realize, well, I was not current. I wasn't really my true self. I didn't even know what it means to be authentic until I was addressing the, the pain and that what the anxiety was trying to convey me. And now I know yeah. more who I really am. And I think that is really ultimately yeah. the purpose of life and the journey that we're here for. So thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for being my, my partner on this healing journey. And I just, I just want to say it's like I knew that when I had heard you for the first time. I, I could just sense that there was something in your voice, in, in your approach, that we were going to be able to handle it. You know, and I had spent so much time searching for a way to heal these parts and to become this full version of myself. And it, in those earlier moments, it just always felt like I was going to be chained to those selves forever, those hard selves, and never, never feel the ease and comfort I was looking for. And... I got to mm. the bottom of it, to the source of it with your help and um, I'm grateful and appreciate it so much.